So it was 2005, I was sitting in College Station, Texas, and reports started coming out about water pouring into New Orleans, Louisiana. I remember talking with Wendy and uh, as we were looking at the city and the water pouring in and all the chaos that was happening to the people, uh, we kind of laughed and I said, man, you'd have to be crazy to move to that place. Well, not too long after I said that, we packed up and we moved to that place. During our time there, there were a number of things that we saw. We partnered with churches that had been really devastated by the, by the hurricane and by the flooding. Some of these places having been underwater, you know, somewhere to the tune of 13 to 14 feet of water. Literally everything was having to be stripped out of those places. The walls, the wiring, everything. Some of those churches, really the only thing that were left was a remnant of what was there before. When you look at a time like that, you see that there was a season where the church, the, the facility at least as it was, was there and doing, doing incredible work to be a blessing to the community and to give Jesus to the people. But you also see in a season like that, that there are changes that have to be made so that the church can go forward. Some of those churches didn't, not only did their walls come down, literally everything came down. And then they looked and had to start back over and to create something new in the same spot that the facility once was. The interesting thing was, is some of those churches, as the facility was coming down, they found out that, honestly, had they left the facility the way that it was, uh, that the people were left in harm's way because some of the things that they discovered weren't actually even safe for the people from asbestos exposure to other things. Here's the reason that I talk about that. In, in this year, 2020, has been really nothing that most people had thought was coming. I was even looking yesterday and a person had uh, kind of on their social media account, you know, 2020, the year of possibilities. And I kind of laughed and I thought, I think you're supposed to probably take that down by now. I mean, I think everybody's figured out that maybe that's not what 2020 is. But then I laughed because I was just making a joke out of it. And I thought, well, no, maybe 2020 really is a year of possibilities. Just as some of those churches in New Orleans came down and something new was built up, I think we have the promise of something happening in 2020 where some things that needed to come down, something new needs to come up. Maybe some things that you're holding on to in the past, just because that's part of your routine or just the way that you like it to be, honestly might be like allowing asbestos to continue to exist in your soul and it's time for it to be cleaned out so that something better can be put in its place. You can think of probably some biblical examples like this as well. People whose road to following the path of God wasn't one that they thought was really what God would want for them, but in fact that it was. I mean, if you can imagine all the trials that Moses went through to lead the people to the promised land, or at least to the cusp of the promised land. Or even if you think of Joseph, who is wrongly accused of rape, has to take a detour down to Egypt so that he can get some lessons in leadership only after that so that he can go back up and he can do what it is that God wanted him to do. The more that I look into the weirdness of this year, the more I see the possibility that that's exactly what God is doing. God is breaking down some things that need to go all the way to the ground. Not even some old remnants of the studs left up of the building. Instead, the whole thing gets absolutely battered to the ground so that he can take in the same space, he can take it and build something up so that something new, something relevant, and something incredible can happen. Listen, my friends, I hope that you have a great week. We're looking forward to worshiping with you on Sunday morning, either here at Woodridge or right there where you're at. We look forward to seeing you. And until then, God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Remember that you've been blessed to be a blessing.